Hello everyone and welcome to the day 12 of Python series. In today's session we'll be learning about flow control in Python. So let's see the agenda for the session. First we'll be talking about what is flow control, then we'll be talking about the different types of flow control in Python. So that's all with the agenda. Now let's start the session. But before we begin the session, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you'll never miss any update from us. Python flow control well these flow controls are the one which control the flow of execution of your program so we have six different types of flow control in python if else nested if else for while break and continue let's discuss them one by one starting with if else so what is this if else let's see its syntax if the condition is true then execute statement 1 else execute statement 2 it's as simple as that Let's see the flow of execution. You start it, you check the condition. If the condition is true, then execute block one. If the condition is false, then go to the else part and execute block two. Fine. Yeah, this block one, it comes under if part. All right, let's move next. Let's move ahead. Next is nested if else. Let's see the syntax. If condition 1 is true, then execute statement 1. Else, if condition 2 is true, then execute statement true. If none of them is true, then execute statement 3. Let's check the flow control of it. Start, check for condition 1. That is, if condition 1 is true. So, if condition 1 is true, then the statement executed with the if block is executed. That is, execute block 1. If first condition is false, then go and check for the second condition, that is else if condition. Now if else if condition is true, then your second block would be executed. If none of them are true, then finally the else block would be executed. That is execute block 3. And yeah, remember one thing, there is no condition associated with a else block. Else block would only execute if all the above conditions are false. Fine? Alright. Next is the for, let's see the syntax. For iterating variable in sequence, colon execute statement. Let's check. Well, it's the example of a program. Like start, we are defining a variable as count equals zero. Then execute statement. Then increment the value of count by one. And then check the condition if count is less than 10. Is one less than 10? Yeah, the condition is true. So again, repeat it and again execute the statement. Again, increment the value of count by one. That is count become two. And again, check if two is less than three. And so on, continue this till 10 is less than 10. And when this thing arrives that 10 is less than 10, your condition become false and you exit the loop. So this is how a for loop works. Let's understand this in a better way with an example. So this is our code, all right? We have defined a list fruits as apple, banana, and cherry for x in fruits. x in fruit of 0 is apple. Then print x. x is what? Apple. So apple would be printed as the output. Now again, what we'll do? We'll again go back and check for x in fruits. Now x of 1 is banana. Then print x. x is what? Banana. So it would print as banana. Again, it will go back, x and fruit of 2 is what? Cherry. Print x. Cherry would be printed. Now if it goes back, there's nothing left in the fruit. So nothing would be printed. Alright? So you got the final output as apple, banana and cherry. Fine? Alright. So let's move ahead. Next is the while. The syntax for this is while condition is true, then execute set of statement under the while. Start, check for the condition. If it is true, then execute block one and then again repeat the loop until the condition is true. In case the condition is false, then just exit the loop. Let's understand this better with an example. This is my code. Like a equal one. In variable part, I got a equal one. While a is less than five. Is a equal 1 less than 5? Yeah, condition is true. Then what? Print the value of a. Alright, so we got the output as 1. 
after getting the output, increase the value of a by 2. So a plus equal to 2, that is 1 plus 2 equal 3. Now again, go back to the loop, check for the condition is 3 less than 5. Condition is true. Then again, go to the print a part. What is a? 3. So print a. So you will get the output as 3. Again, increment the value of a to 2. That is a equal 5. Now check the condition. Is 5 less than 5? No. I think here we got the condition as false. So we got the final output as 1 and 3. Alright. Let's move ahead. Here's another example. A equal 1. In the variable part A equal 1. Check the condition. Why A is less than 3? Is 1 less than 3? Yeah, condition is true. Inside the while part, the first condition that we check. If A mod 2 equal equal 0. Is 1 mod 2 equal equal 0? No, the condition is false. So I'll jump to the else part. So we'll jump to the else part and print a is odd. Now since the value of a currently is 1, so 1 is odd. Fine. Then what we'll do, we'll increment the value of a by 1. That is 1 plus 1 equal 2. Fine. Now again we'll go back to the while part. Now we'll check if 2 is less than 3. Yeah, the condition is true. Fine. Now what we'll do, we'll jump to the if part. And check if 2 mod 2 equal equal 0. Yeah, the condition is true. So this time we'll check if 2 mod 2 equal equal 0. So yeah, the condition is true. So what it will do, it will print the if part statement. That is a is even. A in this case was 2. So 2 is even. Fine. So this is our output. Next, again, it will go and increment the value of a by 1. So now 2 becomes 3. Again, it will go back to the while part. Is 3 less than 3? The condition is false. So your final output is 1 is odd and 2 is even. Fine. So this was about the while statement. Let's move ahead and learn about break. So this break statement, it is used to break the loop at a certain condition. All right. Let's understand this with the help of this flowchart. Start it, check the condition. If the condition is true, then check the break, then check the break condition. If the break condition is false, then only execute block one and repeat the loop. If the break condition comes to be true, then break the entire loop and then exit the loop. All right. Let's check it with an example up here. For example, a equal 10. While a is greater than 0. Check for if a is not equal to 5. If a is not equal to 5, then print a. Else break it. Fine. Let's execute it. Sorry. Just manage. A. Minus minus. If you want to make a career in data science, then IntelliPAT has IIT Madras Advanced Data Science and AI Certification Program. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by IIT professors and industry experts. So we got the output as 9, 8, 7 and 6. Fine. So the moment loop becomes 5, we got exited out of the loop. 
Next we have is the continue statement. Well, the continue statement won't break the loop. So it will just skip the statement in case the condition is true. Let's understand this with the help of this flowchart. So start, check for condition one. If it is true, then check for continue condition. If it is false, then execute block and repeat. Then in case if the condition is true, then stop executing that particular block for that particular loop and cut for that particular iteration and again go back and repeat and check the condition. All right. Uh, let me just show you. Let's just replace this break with continue. And let's see what is the result. So yeah, see so got the output as 9876432.1, but you didn't got five up here, right? Why? So as I told you, this five was skipped. Fine. So this was all about the flow control. So let's proceed and learn about function. So what are these function? Well, a function is a block of organized reusable set of instruction that is used to perform some related action. But why do you even need a function? Well, what if you have to write a program in which you have to use same set of code again and again? For example, you wrote a code of 20 lines or 40 lines and those 40 line of code are coming in your main program at 10 different places. And you have to use those 40 line of code 10 different times in the program. So I don't think that none of you would be interested in writing the same lines of code again and again. So in order to resolve this issue, they created function. So well, this function is a block where you write your code, which you think you might use it again at some point of time. Therefore, it allows the reusability of the code and thus minimizes the redundancy. In Python, there are basically two types of function. The first one is the user defined and the second is built-in function. Let's see them one by one. So what is a user defined function? Well, any function defined by user is a user defined function, right? Syntax. It starts with the keyword def after that, an identifier for a function name and then you pass the arguments into it. All right. Followed by semicolon. And after that, you mention the set of statement inside it. All right. Let's see an example. For example, if you want to add two arguments, so you define a function as add and inside add, you pass two parameters as a and b. So sum equal a plus b and return sum. That's it. So it's as simple as let me just define a user defined function for you. It's like it start with a keyword def. After that, I, I'll write a function name as add inside that I'll pass two arguments, a and b semicolon. And this function should return me the sum of a and b. All right. Fine. So this is my user defined function. Next is the built-in function. Now these built-in function are a predefined set of functions in Python. We have apps function, which returns the absolute value of a number. We have all function, which returns true if all items in an iterable objects are true. We have any function, ASCII function, Ben function, bool function, and many other built-in functions are available there in Python. If you want more information about it, you can just check out the Python official doc. All right. Now that we have defined a function, now let's see how we can call a function. So calling a function, well, there are two ways of calling a function. You can either call it by passing a value or by passing a reference. Let's see them one by one. So first is pass by value, so calling a function by passing the value. For example, a equal 10 def def that is keyword. So we are defining the function as print the value of B is B and again inside the function we are updating the value of b to be 100 and print the new value of b is b and then what we are doing change it and we are passing a now since the value of a was 10 so this function would take the value of b as 10 so print value of b is 10 and new value of b is 100 let me just show you in order to resolve this issue let's define the value as a equal 10 define 
my function inside that I'll pass an argument as b print the value of b is b to concat fine and next we'll update the value of b to be 100 and again print the new value of b is b fine so this is my function now what i'll do i call my function by passing a value calling a function by passing a value to it so i'll write my function and inside that i'll pass the value as a since the value of a was 10 let's see the output see so we got the output as the value of b is 10 and the new value of b is 100 so this was about calling a function by passing a value to it next we have is pass by reference calling a function by passing the reference for example so we have a list as c 10 20 30 so we are defining a function as change them and we are passing an argument d to it inside the function we have print value of d is d d of 0 it's a numeric constant we are defining it as 99 d of 1 as 98 then print the value of d is d then change them now when we are calling a function by passing the reference so what we are doing we are just passing the entire list to it so uh, what will get the output we'll get the output as value of d is 10 20 and 30 and the new value of d is 99 98 and 30 let me just show you with an example c equal 10 comma 20 comma 30 right now let's define my function 2 inside this d is what print the value of d is d all right next we'll define some numeric literals like like d of 0 is equal to 99 d of 1 equals 98 and then print the new value of d is again d fine this is my function now if i call my function using pass by reference so my function 2 and i pass the value c into it so let's see what we get the output so we got the output as the value of d is 10 20 30 and the new value of d is 99 98 and 30. fine if you want to make a career in data science then IntelliPath has IIT Madras Advanced Data Science and AI Certification Program. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by IIT professors and industry experts.